Hi everybody, I hope you are all well. It's an absolutely gorgeous Sunday today. Um, rather than at my mum and dad's, I am at home today. I know usually you see me, my reviews in my living room anyway, but yeah, mum's not very well, full of head cold. So lovely mum, hope you feel better soon. Um, I have been a busy bee doing X, Y and Z, loads and loads of stuff that I needed to get done today and then this is the last thing that I need to do for today. So uh, I'm filming this and getting uploaded at my house today. Um, so at some point later today, because of my terrible broadband, you will get this, uh, but I don't know exactly when. Um, so, uh, it's only been, yeah, it's been a week, hasn't it, since I did my last review. Uh, work's been... Uh, I just don't even want to go there. How <laughs> work has been this week? It's been insane. Um, but I only have uh, I only have two working days, and then I've got two days off, and then back in for one day because I'm going to bath. I'm wearing my Jane Austen bath T-shirt especially for this video um, because I am doing something very very exciting with my sister in that. Our bestie, Sarah. Hey, Sarah, uh, who I always tend to give shout outs in my videos, has come to the UK. She lives in America. We've never physically met each other. She's been friends with my sister for about 10 years, and I've been friends with her for about six, I think, six or seven. Um, and yeah, she's come to the UK for a trip, so we're going to meet each other in Bath. So I would like. Wednesday, I'm so so excited. It's gonna be absolutely incredible. Um, I just oh yeah, it's gonna be a blast. So I'm gonna have a couple of days off to be in Bath um and meet Sarah with my sister. It's so exciting. Um and obviously because we're we love like you know Bridgerton and all that lot, obviously Queen Charlotte the other other week watching that. Um it's gonna be absolutely amazing uh showing her around uh, and, and all of these places in other Jane Austen and other period dramas, the locations and such. Very excited to show Sarah the Crescent. I, I really like the Crescent. It's smaller than you realise. It, re <laughs> it really is. Um, but it's, it's an absolutely wonderful, wonderful part of Bath. So, yeah so so super excited um to to show her that so yeah oh gosh i can't believe we are at the what's the 21st of may now time has just flown by but anyway that's that's enough about my life i'm here to talk about the book i've been reading this week which is casting off the fourth volume of the Cazalet um chronicles uh, so uh, yeah, fourth out of fifth book, and I'm kind of I, I, I've, I, I'm, I have that awkward thing that I can't really tell you much about the plot, and because it has been, you know, the standard has been fine throughout. I haven't had anything kind of really interesting to say or not say about the about these books, so I just kind of feel like this is might be a bit of a, a boring book review. Um, I'll try and make it, you know, pretty short and sweet, so let me put it that way. Um, because I haven't got much to say about it. Um, but here we go. So this is the fourth out of fifth book, as I just said, of the Cazalette Chronicles. Originally, the, these series of books were published as four books, and then the fifth one came out, like, 10 years later so it, it's there's there's a significant jump in time before there was a fifth book and I think to be honest reading this you can feel that almost like not saying that everything gets tied up but it feels like it has a very distinct ending you don't necessarily go okay she's going to write another one or, you know, she's left the door open to write another one. Of course she left the door open because they're characters. She can do whatever the heck that she wants with them. Um, but you know that feeling that sometimes you get an author who writes... Like, okay, let's take, for example, Ken Follett. Ken Follett's Pillar, Pillars of the Earth um, series, you know, the Kingsbridge series, which I love, 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 love those books so much. I think after the end of each book, you can, you can really, really say he could go back to that 
he can carry on information about that location and even when he did the 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 most recent book rather than going forward in time as he had with all the previous he went back in time um and that was a really interesting move for him to make and he wrote a fantastic book for it and all of his books are fantastic but you, you know what i mean the standard wasn't wasn't stopped as it were um he he did absolutely fantastically with those with those books whereas this what this it kind of feels like yes at any point she could go back to the family and talk about them but at the same time she's she's going okay i think it, it's sort of like it's time to close the book on these characters i'm giving you a fitful ending for them um, but we'll just see what happens because yeah I mean as, as mentioned in previous ones I absolutely love the BBC radio play um, version and that's what got me to buy these books to then explore them um, further and to be honest I always kind of felt that when you get to the point of the fifth book which is all change even in the radio play it was just kind of like oh okay right we're here now um, and I think the reason for that, especially, is, like, I understand the thing about complex marriages and when you're, you know, older and did things pan out the way that you wanted it, etc. And because she's followed, especially the girls, Louise, Polly and Clary, throughout all of these books from childhood to adulthood and beyond, um... You could understand that she wanted to play with that reflecting through them and they were kind of the perfect characters to do that with so yeah i totally get that but at the same time i did wonder like why are we doing this what 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 was the point so that's why i very much you know want to explore the books and understand the characters a bit more now in the fourth one we have got a um, little semi-spoiler here because I just need to set the scene. Um, so we have got Polly who's um, dealing with the loss of her mother. We have got Louise who, as mentioned in my previous review, she has decided to do a complete like 180 away from her entire life plan and go off and do something which she has come to well not regret because of the outcome a certain outcome that's come from it but question why did she do it and she continues to question in a life situation that just isn't working for her and then you have Clary. Now, Clary, Clary's, Clary's the one who I have a real issue with. And with Clary, she very much following event, you know, as mentioned in my previous review, looking after her baby sister and, you know, wanting her dad home and all of this jazz. Um, she's very much on her own road of going right this is what I want to be this is what I want to do totally love and respect that but at the same time <laughs> I don't like Archie I, I've never had a liking for the character Archie and I don't know if you if you have seen my previous review at the end I looked you know through the the chapter the uh, you know looking at the chapter list and such for this book and Archie was very very prominent there was a whole section um whole part where it only had two sections to it and both of those were titled Archie and I was like oh god I'm gonna have to spend I, even though I didn't try to or at least I hope I didn't express my annoyance um at the end of my last review I was like oh god I'm gonna have to spend a long time with Archie and I don't like that I mean <sighs> Archie's not a bad guy he's not a bad guy it's just that Because of her daddy issues, I understand her choosing him, but at the same time, it's like, Clary, love, there's plenty more fish in the sea. Just, just, did it have to be him? Did it have to be him? And it's like, so she's basically just marrying her father. It's just, 
I don't, I don't, I'm not fond of, of Archie at all. And what also is very, very weird about this book, and I, I can sort of see why, but at the same time I can't understand why, we get introduced to a whole load new characters. So, um, the sister-in-law of one of the Kazalites, I'm not going to say who because spoilers, blah, blah, blah. Um, at her and her kids and it all of a sudden get brought into the picture and I'm like, where the, why, why? It was just little, I, I still, even, even though I knew they were going to be there because of the radio play and such, it just feels like that thing of I'm pulling these people in as a possibility for the future and it's like mm, really really do, do we do we need to bring in a new family into the Cazalets I get obviously because of marriage and you know your family expands okay that's fine but but still it was like okay so we're we're gonna really focus a chunk of time on these additional characters and their storylines when we literally have no idea i'd rather spend time with the Cazalette family you know which i've been doing for the past few books rather than this new set of characters but saying that she's as always um elizabeth uh she has you know characterize them well she gives them space to show off their good and bad parts she she doesn't paint them as heroes or villains she she just she allows them to be them which i always i always did respect her about her characters throughout the Cazalette family anyway um it was just a bit like okay i'm gonna just drop these people here and there you go Mm, no I'm not I'm not I'm not best pleased with that I'm not best pleased with that um so what else has been happening oh yes we we got um some more information to do with the parents because remember there's three generations I first them as the grandparents the parents and the kids and Clary Louise and Polly amongst the kids so the parents level we got um uh, with Clary's dad and such um it was very interesting his decision to stay in France in the previous book and it's it's one of those situations where I can I kind of I get it but at the same time because of the way that he he was about his life and his home and his children from the very good, you know offset of the the very first book i was like oh i'm a bit perplexed by that choice it, given his life in france as well with the war and everything it does kind of make sense but at the same time i, I get I get it but I don't get it I don't know if maybe maybe I'm more like Harry than I thought maybe that's what maybe that's why she ran off with Archie because she wanted her daddy back um but yeah it just there are some choices that Elizabeth does in these in this series of books where I, I really do question it and I can't help it I mean it, it's I'm not saying that everything has to be sunshine and rainbows because that's that's not life. That's not life. You've got to be realistic about things. But at the same time, given all of the stuff that he said and he did and his principles and such, to then just completely break away from that, I was a bit annoyed with him. I was a bit annoyed. Mm. Um... Uh, with we also have the um our matriarch the duchy um going through some stuff again i don't want to i don't want to spoil um she was yeah i think it was very interesting that 
I, I, it was very appropriate the fact that this was until there was t you know 10 odd year wait this was like the last book that Elizabeth chose what she chose for the duchy to happen and it really is a a casting off point <laughs> which casting off makes sense the title makes sense um because yeah the the absolutely the most solid foundation that is their family um is changing and there are various choices that the, the characters had to make and I, I I have to say I was I was sad I was sad when that changing took place I also was really really sad um, about Sid uh i can't i, I don't want to i don't want to spoil too much but that was that was that was tough that was really tough and in general i think this was a tough read because not only well it's a it's a big book it's nearly like 600 pages long um not only was it you know a, a big read but at the same time it was Things are, even though, you know, the war is over, they've got a new foundation and all of that stuff with their family and that. There are people who have got serious cracks. We've got people who need help. We've got people who, and some, uh, if some of, we've got a uh, very, very happy uh, with their choices and some aren't. But isn't that life? Isn't that, you know, the way it goes it's yeah there's it feels like a bit of a mixed bag so you can understand that Elizabeth was like okay I could I could go back to this I can carry on I can you know do this that, and the other thus she went back to them 10 years later um but yeah not everyone gets their happy ending not everyone is in a good place and that's life. <laughs> um, it, it's just, there's a lot of stuff going on in this book. And especially because you've got all of the family, you know, as I said, you know, coming back together, you have load, you've got a load of new characters that you're having to get to know at the end of this, what, well, at the time was the end of this chronicle until the final book um it just felt a bit chaotic it kind of reminded me again actually that does actually take me back to is it book two i think it was book two where i mentioned the chaos because uh, people were going here there and everywhere and there were you know the yeah it must have been two because the war had started um there was this cha chaotic energy about it and this one I feel like it had the same it was good it was strong the characters were great we got everything uh, you know so many people back together we learned this that, and the other about them um but it was I, I wanted I, I I hoped that the final or you know coming back together with the family would happen in a tone that was more like the first book the pre-war kind of feeling where life was limitless and there was there was no pos there was no reason for concern um but then i have got the final book to go um so you know we'll, we'll see what happens but this is this one that it, yeah it just felt a bit off and i think um, I think also one thing I forgot to mention is that because Louise, Clary and Polly have hit a certain age and they're going through certain stages of their lives and various decisions they have to make, it's the first time that they properly see their parents as people um, and understand why they made the choices that they made. 
So maybe it's because of the different perspectives. Maybe that's why Elizabeth wrote this book in the way that she did, which kind of made me feel unsure and um, a bit off kilter. I don't know. Um, but yeah, it, it's, it's just a bit unstable. I, ca I can't think of anything more to say about that without talking about obviously more um, spoiler related stuff, which I don't want to do. As I've said, you know, it's been really difficult doing these reviews without saying too much. And because the standards have been pretty much the same throughout, I feel like I'm just reiterating everything that I've already said. But this one I did feel was the, the least stable to me. Like it was good, but at times I'm going, huh? What? Where, where did that come from? You know, uh, that kind of thing. So yeah, I feel a bit on the fence about this one. And I'm not sure. Ugh. I think quite possibly it's my least favorite out of the books. I mean, it, it's not a bad book. It's just, uh, chaotic for me. <laughs> Take me back to the first book about structuring. I thought that was structuring was great. Um, but yeah, it's still well written. The characters are great. I get, the pacing is good. The locations are great. I get the choices that they made, although some of them I very, very much questioned them. Um, but it just was a bit off kilter. So, yeah, that's all I can think of to say without doing, you know, major spoilers and, uh, you know, talking about stuff that probably people aren't going to be interested in, talk in me talking about. So there we go. So I'm going to finish there um, in my slightly shorter um, book review. Uh, I, I, don't, I, I don't even know if that was, that wasn't really a great book review, but as I said, you know, I'm four books out of five uh, for this, for this collection where this writing standard hasn't really changed. So I don't know what else to say. Um, but those are my thoughts on casting off the fourth book in the Cazalette collection. Now, questions. Would I read this again? Yes, but only of, obviously as a reread, you know, sort of thing. But I really think probably my mind's not going to change about this one. I'm not going to enjoy it as much as the previous ones. I don't think so. Um, would I read any more of Elizabeth's books? Well, yes, I think I definitely would because she's not a bad writer whatsoever. Uh, would I recommend this to anyone? Yes, I would. Um, but I would say, you know, because I don't, I'm not very fond of this one. And can I give a shout out again to whoever designed these covers because they are absolutely gorgeous. I love, it's almost like, um, it, it's not a willow tree, but it kind of reminds me of, of them with the branches, the um, low branches and everything that they've got here. It's just absolutely gorgeous. Um, right, and then as always, there's the BBC Radio adaptations of all five books, which I really, really strongly recommend. Uh, I really, really enjoy listening to them, and I will include a link to them in the description below. So there we go. So those are my thoughts on casting off the fourth Cazalette book. Have you read this book? I'd love to know what you think. Leave me a comment in the comments box below. Give me a thumbs up, thumbs down, a tight cheer, let you side. I'll be back with my thoughts on the final Cazalette book. Here it is, all change. I love the green. I love the like spring, the new flowers and everything. Um, it's just, yeah, I really love, I really, really, really love this, this cover. Um, so we are in the 1950s and we're going to have an updated family tree again. Uh, let's have a look. Oh, yes, we've got quite an expanded family tree here. Uh, yeah, with Polly, Louise and Clary all updated. Sorry, there's a massive plane going over my house. Um, oh, okay. Oh, this is different. This is different. Okay, so previously we'd have like part one and then it would have sections and we say like Louise and etc. No, we've just got 10 parts and the only information are the dates that the the book covers. So we're going from June 1956 
to December 1958. Ooh. So, yeah, very, very interesting. Um, so there we are. I'll be back. My thoughts on all change as soon as I'm done. It could be at the weekend, but then uh, next weekend. But because obviously in a couple of days I'm going to Bath for a couple of days, that might not happen. We shall see. But yeah, I'm very, very uh, excited for my trip to Bath to finally meet Sarah in person. So yeah. All right, guys. See you later. Bye.